This is way better than an annuity. By the end of this video episode, you will understand why a Mac is better than an annuity to invest a lump sum. Get ready. Uh, you're going to gain insights into some opportunities and ramifications that maybe you did not uh, know existed before. So I'm Doug Andrew. I've been helping people optimize their financial assets and minimize taxes now for north of 48 years. If you've watched very many of my educational videos or read any of my 12 books, my favorite financial vehicle, uh, bar none, to help people, especially with long-term goals like retirement planning, uh, to accumulate money tax-free, not just tax-deferred, and then be able to generate tax-free income. And at the end of the day, when they finally pass away, whatever they leave behind blossoms or increases in value uh, and transfers tax-free is a max-funded indexed universal life insurance contract that is structured correctly and funded properly. Now, if it's structured correctly and funded properly, which I'm sad to say, uh, over 99% of IUL policies in America are not structured correctly or funded properly, to do what I'm going to show you here. But when they are, uh, they qualify to be what I call a laser fund. A laser is an acronym that stands for Liquid Asset Safely Earning Returns. In fact, it happens to be uh, the title of uh, my most recent best-selling book that's flying off of our warehouse shelf. It's called The Laser Fund. And uh, stay with me to the end of this episode, and I'll gift you a copy of this book so you can learn about several of the strategies. Now, why is it my favorite vehicle? Well, uh, ever since 1980, when E.F. Hutton first came up with this idea of using a life insurance policy structured more for living tax-advantaged benefits rather than for the death benefit, uh, I've helped people uh, optimize their assets and increase the liquidity of their money, the ability to access their money when they need it, uh, the safety on their money and the rate of return and have it be totally tax-free. IRAs and 401ks are only tax-deferred and people have a rude awakening at the end of the day because uh, they have to pay tax when they withdraw money out of those IRAs or 401ks. Now, to be honest with you, some people um, are not shocked. Uh, they, they just sort of expected that. I would say... <laughs> A lot of people are surprised. You mean I have to pay tax now on these IRAs and 401ks? And so uh, many times what I'll do is help them uh, do a strategic rollout out of those IRAs and 401ks over a five-year period usually to get the money out of those IRAs and 401ks at, at today's lower tax rates and then invest the net after-tax money into a, a portfolio of laser funds so that they can then generate tax free income that will be greater than the net after tax money they were hoping to get out of their IRAs or 401ks. And we make them immune from uh, increased taxes and inflation and market volatility by using indexing. Now, this episode, I'm going to talk about how many, many people, I think in America, get duped into uh, using annuities during their retirement. Now, what is an annuity? It's simply a savings account with an insurance company. Now, insurance companies, uh, in fact, the overall insurance industry is not only the backbone of America, but the backbone of the world. This is where banks and credit unions put 30 to 40 percent of their tier one assets for liquidity and safety. And banks will pay you a measly one percent interest and they turn around and put some of that money into insurance companies and earn four or five percent. How much more is five than, than one? I mean, on every million, they pay out 10,000 a year in interest that they borrow in OPM, other people's money. They turn around and make 50,000, uh, which is five times or 500%. Yeah, you can bypass the middleman. And I have uh, video episodes that talk about that and put your serious cash directly into a maximum funded IUL policy with an insurance company. But there are some people that go, you know, Doug, uh, uh, I'm thinking about just putting a lump sum into an annuity 
And I realize uh, the money in an annuity grows tax deferred, correct? Uh, and if you touch it before age 59 and a half, uh, there's usually a 10% penalty, unless you do an immediate annuity or whatever. But then when you turn on income, it's now taxable as you take money out and it's taxed LIFO. That means last in, first out. Whereas if you put money into an insurance policy um, and it is used for living benefits, it's taxed FIFO generally, where the first money you put in is the first money out. Let me simplify this by using an example. Let's say you put in $500,000 into an annuity. And for the sake of simplicity, let's say it's earning 10%. Well, theoretically, you ought to be able to withdraw your interest, 50,000 a year. But see that 50,000 in an annuity is your interest, even if it's not a qualified annuity like an IRA. And so that is uh, the last money you're earning your interest each year is the first money coming out. That's all taxable. It's only when you gouge into the principal or your basis of 500,000 uh, do you get a tax break because you've already been taxed on that money. Does that make sense? Now, a max funded insurance policy where you're putting it in in compliance with IRS guidelines, uh, if you put in 500,000 and you're earning 10%, the first 10 years of pulling out 50,000 a year, it's tax free because the first money in is the first money out. You're recovering your basis first. Uh, and then you would pay tax uh, after that if you did it the dumb way. The point I'm making in this episode is sometimes people just don't care about um, tax. Maybe their tax bracket isn't that high. And maybe, you know, they just think, well, I, I want to contribute and pay tax, whatever. Okay, most, most people want to save tax. So they tell me they're thinking about an annuity and I go, uh, I wouldn't do that. And I'm telling them the truth. now. I doubt uh, I will ever own an annuity. I never have. Why? Because uh, I can put money, the same amount of money into usually the same insurance company that's offering an annuity and I can end up with uh, more advantages. Some people don't understand this. Some advisors don't understand this. Uh, they go, well, life insurance has an additional cost that annuities don't have. An annuity is just a savings account Life insurance, you have this cost of the death benefit. Uh, what if you die? Well, yeah, but if you maximum fund uh, a life insurance contract, you actually will usually have um, a death benefit coming along for the ride, but that death benefit, if you structure it correctly, usually only uses up about one of the percentage points of the interest that you're earning uh, over the life of the life insurance policy. Uh, let's say you own one for 20, 25, 30 years. So for many, many years, I've earned an average of 11% uh, or greater. If I earned 11, I was netting 10. So I'm earning a net rate of 10% tax-free on a max-funded insurance policy, whereas with the same insurance company, they were only offering on their annuities uh, maybe uh, 7 or 8 or 9%. And, uh, and I'm going, well, why... <laughs> What, what, what's up with that? Well, it's interesting, insurance companies that offer annuities, even indexed annuities, which means your money is safe in the insurance company, but if you want, they're linking it to an index like the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones. So when the market goes up, you get to benefit, uh, but when the market crashes, you do not lose. And I love indexing as a strategy, but usually with indexed annuities because of the price of options and so forth, uh, the caps on what they will pay you uh, might only be, you know, 8%. So if the S&P goes up uh, 8, you'll get 8. But if it goes up 10 or 12, you, you're capped at 8. Whereas with the same insurance company with Index Universal Life, the cap might be uh, 10 or 11 or 12. So if the S&P goes up 12, you earn 12. Now, you might earn 12 and only net 11, or you might earn 11 and net 10, but that's better than an annuity that's only earning eight because it's capped at eight. Does that make sense? But what else comes along for the ride uh, with um, the insurance policy, a death benefit? So sometimes people go, oh yeah, well, I can access money tax-free, but you know what? I think I just wanna put this into an annuity is what I was thinking, and it'll be tax deferred. And if I need the money, I'm okay with paying tax. And I go, well, why would you do that? 
because if you want the safety of an insurance company and you're wanting to grow tax deferred, you can create a MEC. What's a MEC? A modified endowment contract. And this is where you can put in a lump sum, let's say 500,000. It could be 100,000, 500,000, or a million. But you put in $500,000 into an annuity, it's going to grow, hopefully, tax deferred. And if you start turning on income, you're going to have to pay tax on what you withdraw. Okay. If you create a MEC, that means uh, you still accumulate your money tax deferred. If you access money out of it, you're going to have to pay tax just like an annuity, but your potential for rate of return is greater with an indexed universal life than with an indexed annuity. But what's another advantage? <laughs> well, uh, with the life insurance, it will blossom when you die. An annuity doesn't usually blossom when you die. So let's say a 60-year-old who puts in $500,000 uh, into a max funded IUM, you could get a ton of life insurance for that. Yeah, you could probably end up with uh, two and a half million of life insurance. But if you want growth, no, you take the least amount. Well, at age 60, the least amount of insurance you could get away with might be a, a million dollars uh, if you're putting in 500,000. So uh, if you do put in 500,000 and you die, even a day after you put in 500,000, uh, you, your heirs get a million dollars and that's totally income tax free. The annuity uh, is not. And the annuity, if you die with 500,000 in it, you just leave behind 500,000. So I often ask people, why would you uh, leave behind this when you can leave behind double that uh, if it doesn't cost you anything? And people say, well, isn't life insurance more expensive than an annuity? Well, there's an extra cost there but usually you're making more money using indexed universal life than if you use an indexed annuity. And so you're actually covering the cost with the greater rate of return. But if you want to maximize what you leave behind, uh, I, I would take the life insurance policy any day because it will leave behind maybe double what you have in there. Whereas an annuity, when you die, just leaves behind X. I'd rather leave behind 2X. Does that make sense? So sometimes um, uh, we don't uh, think through things. And I can show you that even if you create a modified endowment contract, which simply means your money grows tax deferred, and if you access money, you're going to have to pay tax on any of the income you pull out. Uh, you could have avoided that by funding it over five years. But if you don't care about that, then choose the max funded indexed universal life because it will blossom when you die. And the cost of insurance is totally covered if you structure it correctly. So if this is giving you some insights into opportunities that maybe you didn't know existed before, uh, people begin to go, oh, that's why Doug Andrew says he has never owned an annuity and probably never will. Yeah, why would I do that when I can use the same amount of money into a max funded indexed universal life and have all the benefits of an annuity and a whole bunch more, okay? If you want to learn about this, uh, study this book called The Laser Fund. I want to gift you a free copy. This is a 300-page book, which is actually two books in one. This side is about 200 pages, 14 chapters, with all kinds of charts and graphs and explanations of how to diversify and create the foundation for a tax-free retirement. If you learn more by stories, you flip it over, and this side has 100 pages, 12 chapters, with 62 actual client stories of how the laser fund can be used for all kinds of financial goals, not just retirement, college funding for your kids and grandkids, emergency funds, working capital for business, on and on and on. And so uh, here's how you claim your free copy. You simply go to laserfund.com or click on the link below. You contribute a nominal amount towards the shipping and handling. I'll cover the rest of that cost. I'll fire out a copy to you, hard copy. 300 pages. But if you like to listen and learn or watch and learn, there's options there. And you also may want to check out how you can talk to a, uh, a professional that will help you understand how this may apply in your particular set of circumstances. Or you can learn on one of our many online educational webinars. But this is about you and your brighter future.